In this video, we're going to share with you the tips and tricks you need to know to catch red band trout. My name is Troy Miller, Adventure Oregon. I'm here at Harriman Springs Resort. About to take out a pontoon and uh, we're going to go fishing for red brown trout on Upper Klamath Lake. Ah, looking forward to it. It'll be a great day. Beautiful start to a morning, that's for sure. Come to the water where you will find peace. Take a step into the river. Get down on your knees. Come to the mountain. Well, take it in the view. You will find the life is greater than you knew. When you go through the storm, I will hold you, keep you warm. When you stay in the night, I will shelter. I Thanks for joining me on another journey. Today, we're in Oregon, and we're with Adventure Oregon doing some trout fishing. So if you need a trout fishing guide, check out the link below. If you're new to the channel, I'm Wayne, and April's sick today, unfortunately. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. Look how clear the water is. Mosey in real slow, but as you look on the surface in the water, if you come up here in about another 20 or 30 feet, you'll have a good chance to see some fish. There's the fish. See him? Look to your left, to your left. To your left about 12 o'clock. And right in front of you as well. Look, they're all good size. Average size is about four to six pounds in here. And it's not uncommon to see them upwards of 10 pounds. Yeah. The record out of here is 26 pounds in the river. There's a red band rainbow trout. Yeah, red band rainbow trout. Hello, guys. And this is the wildlife refuge out there. It's the marsh. And that's why this area is, you know, so important as a national wildlife refuge. There's so many nesting birds that come here annually. They lay their egg, raise their young, and they either stay here or sometimes they fly out for the winter and come back in the spring. A lot of habitat, a lot of wildlife here. It's a, just a great place, a great place to enjoy, a great place to relax. A couple of pelicans about to fly by. Ooh, they saw some fish. Did you see how they, yeah. they ducked down like that? Down like that. Yeah, you saw, oh, you, they, you know, it's kind of like rubbernecking back, like, oh, did you see that fish back there? Like, that's bitter. <laughs> Show us what you caught. Yeah! We're gonna get a picture before we let him go. Awesome. awesome. This is my grandpa's old pole. He served in General MacArthur's honor guard. Oh, really? He's a pretty, pretty badass old guy, man. Cool dude. Obvious. How we uh, rig these worms up? Yeah, sure, let's do it. Let me check it out. So basically, we'll call this a Klamath Lake rig, you know. We start with a number 10 bait holder hook, the same pretty. Hook it right above the pat, try to follow the worm along. Of course, they don't like to cooperate. Yeah, I always get a little pissed off when someone stab at me. Yeah, so get as much of that hook buried into the worm as possible. Hopefully, completely hidden so you don't really see that yeah, yeah. The hook anymore. To do this, you'll need, either need a uh, hypodermic needle or you can buy a worm pumper. How are you doing? I've never seen this before. Yeah, so I want to show you. So we'll hit it right in the head. We'll okay. just pump, pump an air it into up it. a little bit of air. Okay, now. We we'll just want to make sure that's floating. See that got that He's floating. He's like his own out. bobber. Yeah, that keeps the worm up where the fish can see it instead of down in, into the grass and into the mud. And uh, we just take a little split shot, number six line. That egg sinker is stopped by that split shot, but it's free to move. It's a little slack in the line. The fish will swallow it. If we give them a lip, we can just take it right out. But if we get them a little deeper, we just cut the line real close to where the hook is and now these hooks will dissolve in about two months. A lot of people think barbless is better. If you get a fish deep, even with a barbless hook and you try to pull it out, yeah, it'll cause the fish to bleed. Yeah. By leaving the hook in, a very small hook by the way, leaving it in and clipping the line as close as you can, 
it's like the fish has a pierced nose or something. He's driving around you know, <laughs> with a pierced thing, in his, and then a couple months it just dissolves and goes away. You know, and the alternative is, you know, to pull it out and make them bleed to death. Yeah. And I think this is a better way. All right, so what we're going to do, we're just going to cast this out real gentle and make sure we keep that worm alive and keep it floating good. So I'm give myself a little bit of room. Just kind of lob it out there, just like that. And again, we'll keep a little bit of slack in the line. How long does that air stand the, the worm like that? Long time. If you pump them up right and you don't damage the worm too bad when you put it on the hook, then it should stay. At least for a few hours. How long you been fishing these waters? Hmm, probably about 35 years. Okay. Since I was eight years old. I don't know how long that's been. A lot longer than we all want to admit. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have your drag set? Yeah, you have to... Yeah. Because these big fish, man. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll pull just on. like that. And if your drag's too tight, they'll snap your line off. Because we're only using six pound line. Oh, okay. We gotta go light tackle or else they'll, you know, they'll see it spooked. The main thing is, I want to make sure that line stays a little loose. If the boat starts to drift into a position where it's tightening up the line, you know, you gotta let it go strip it out. And that gives the fish a little time. If he first bites the worm, that before he feels the hook or feels anything pull and notices something's going on, right? you know, he gets a chance to really swallow that worm before he changes his mind about it. That's what I'm talking about, a little bit of fishing action, finally. It's okay. Take us a little one to get off first. Pretty. Safety net here. It's safe on the fish. Oh, that's good. Red band trout in the boat. Is it two pounds? Yeah, maybe a pound and a half. I don't think he's quite 15 inches. Normally they gotta be 15 inches to, to, to keep him in here. Yeah, he's short. He's just a little bit shy. But, uh, still a nice looking fish. Yeah. It's shot a hand. Yeah, it's pretty. Oh, the light is. That's right. Yeah, too much. Yeah, yeah. Just get him right back in the water. Keep him alive and to so, live another day. This does the least amount of damage to the fish when we just clip it off. There you go. Nice little fish there. Yeah, that's not bad at all. There he goes. Nice. Discover Klamath mm -hmm. is the most vocal advocates for tourism in Klamath County. They are a nonprofit and they receive various funding to help the tourism community and to provide resources for destination owners and uh, people like me that are out here running tourism businesses. They help with word of mouth and marketing materials. I want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend. And like always, thank you for living life.